Smiley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Monday, August 12th. So we have the moon in Scorpio again here all day, but today we are building towards the first quarter moon taking place in the Scorpio energy, which will pop off at its peak potency at 1120 AM Eastern Standard Time. We'll touch on that a little bit more when we get to it here today, but just know that we're putting things into perspective. We're kind of seeing hidden truths, hidden details. We're looking at things from a different angle, especially in comparison to where it is that we were at with our emotions and mentality back under that new moon in Leo. The first quarter moon is always a time of decision, of action, of pressurized systems to put us in a situation and a circumstance to not only review the past from a different lens, a different perspective, a different set of eyes, but we start realizing where it is that we want to go from here. So in a fixed water sign, such as Scorpio, there is an intensity, emotionally speaking. We do use a lot of the darker topics and themes the let's call it pressurized situations, the frustration, the agitation, sometimes even anger as the fuel for us to be motivated, hell bent, damn well and determined to make a change, to make a true transformation. So we do have to expect there being a little bit of a trigger and activation as we settle into this energy here today, but we are definitely going to feel a whole hell of a lot of relief once we get this first quarter moon activation over with. So with all of that being said, there are 10 different aspects taking place here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in the Scorpio energy getting off to a very, very bumpy start, meaning we are going to have a very tough interaction with first Mars and then Jupiter. Both of them, of course, are in Gemini energy. And this is a tough interaction, especially with Mars, first and foremost, because Mars rules over the Scorpio energy that the moon is currently in. So Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our actions, our passions, our desires, even our anger, he is trying to kind of formulate a plan, a strategy for new options, new opportunities to move forward, to set some new goals and targets, if you will. But in the Gemini energy, we're still kind of torn. We're divided on those choices, those paths moving forward. And so this particular energy is definitely going to highlight the frustration, the agitation, where it is that there is a pressure building where we just can't stand to continue to stay in the same old, same old, and that being the driving force for a major change, for a major transformation in our energy, in our focus, in the path, in the direction that we now want to walk. Now, of course, the moon making a tough interaction with Jupiter, because of course, Mars and Jupiter are working very closely together here this week as they approach their conjunction point. Jupiter being the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. He's in this Gemini energy, trying to expand our mental plane, our thoughts, our ideas, our perspective. So normally, if this was a positive interaction, we get a little bit of a boost of optimism, of confidence. Jupiter, typically speaking, is the hype girl of the Zodiac. We usually get all kinds of, let's call it elevated thoughts and feelings. However, this is not one of those particular aspects. Instead, we aren't feeling hot at all. We're not feeling optimistic. We're not feeling confident. We are confused as F on how it is that we're supposed to move forward. We are essentially tapping into where it is that we're creating more anxiety, more of an issue, more of a problem than there actually needs to be. Now, does it feel good? No. Is it supposed to? Absolutely not. We have to be highlighted to where it is that we're feeling blocked and frustrated, where it is that there is this pressurized system pushing us to make a change and recognizing where it is that we aren't feeling good. We're not feeling confident enough to actually make said change. We need to realize it in order to actually fix, heal and repair it. Now we won't be sitting in the funk for too long. We do have a little bit of help here and it's coming from a very interesting dynamic between the moon and Scorpio and Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde here in this Pisces energy. This is gonna be a trine. A trine means that we're working with like elements. This is water on water action. So what water does is first of all, it washes over us. 
It cleanses us. It purifies us from the heaviness, from the weight of that funk that we have been sitting in. Once that particular weight has been removed, then we sit in the emotions. We start building ourselves up. We start kind of being inspired and excited again for what could be built, what we could create. We start really kind of fine tuning our emotions in a more positive perspective, a positive mood, a positive attitude. That is where the water energy helps us change and transform in our emotional realm, in our perspective, in our soul, in our spirit. Saturn, of course, retrograde in this Pisces energy, helping us to deconstruct the old belief system. We have a different view, different perspective, different vision for ourselves, for the future. And Saturn is really wanting to help us get down to the fine tuning of the plan, of the strategy for us to build and create something new. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Pluto. Pluto rules over the Scorpio energy. So again, another intense interaction. Pluto is the great transformer. He is also retrograde, but he is retrograde in Aquarius energy. So the Scorpio energy and the Aquarius energy have one thing in common. They are both fixed signs. Fixed energy attempts to help us stabilize. That Scorpio energy is attempting to stabilize our emotions. The Aquarius energy is attempting to stabilize our perspective, our vision, especially where the future is concerned. But Pluto being retrograde in this Aquarius energy is supposed to be highlighting where the power struggle is alive and well within us, whether that be between the old version of self, the new version of self, the ego self versus the higher self. There is some sort of tug of war going on here and we really need to illuminate that particular power struggle so that we can flip the script in the most positive most empowering type of ways and really make a major change a major shift in our mood and our attitude in our emotions in our vision when we are bossing up to really take a good look at these particular blockages where it is that we're preventing ourselves from seeing the greater grander picture where it is maybe that we're holding on to old emotions that don't apply to this current situation and definitely don't need to be taken into futuristic vision. We have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, who is currently retrograde in his place of power in this Virgo energy, making a positive interaction with the North Node. So the North Node is in Aries energy. It's trying to show us the path that we need to get on to be more independent, to get to know thyself, to kind of, you know, really get on the path that is going to lead us to our own soul's mission and purpose. Now, Mercury working very closely and in a positive way with the North Node, we're starting to piece together what we could do, where there's an option to move forward where we are, again, taking a finer look at the nitty gritty details of our lives. We've been focused on the problematic areas in order to fix, heal, and repair them. And because Mercury and the North Node are working closely together in a positive manner, we're starting to see new opportunities be offered to us, new moves to be made, new visions to kind of, you know, really pour into and expand upon. This is all a positive signature for growth, for healing, for resolution, for repairment. 1120 AM Eastern Standard Time, the moon in Scorpio going to get into the boxing ring, square off with the sun in Leo energy. This is what gives us our first quarter moon. The square isn't supposed to feel good. It highlights tension. It highlights conflict. We're going through a growing pain. But one thing that we do know is that when the moon and the sun come together in any kind of interaction, there's going to be a revelation. There's going to be an aha moment because the sun is shining a bright light in Leo energy. This is getting us to the heart, to the soul of the matter, what we're really passionate about, what we really desire for ourselves. And we're able to tap into a boldness, a bravery, a courage that is needed in order to change change in order to transform in order to break away from the old and actually start building towards the new so this is the pressurized system this is the peak of the energy definitely doesn't feel good but it's going to reveal to us where our energy our time our attention is needed the most in order to shift out of what it is that we have been doing cleaning up those kind of loose ends and so that we can pivot and start building and creating something more heart aligned now, Mars, the god of war, 
ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, who is in Gemini energy, is going to be making an awkward interaction with Pluto, the great transformer, who is retrograde in Aquarius energy. So let's talk about this for a second. First of all, what does Mars and Pluto have in common? Well, one is the god of war, the other one is the god of the underworld, and both of them rule over the Scorpio energy that the moon is in. Okay, so Mars is in Gemini energy, a mutable air sign, while Pluto is retrograde in Aquarius energy, a fixed air sign. So our mood, our attitude, our determination, our motivation has to change. Why? Because we are empowering ourselves to have a stronger, more focused vision, goal, dream that we need to kind of, you know, start honing in on. This is going to illuminate for us where there's a hidden passion, a hidden motivation, where it is that the intensity level on some of the goals, some of the dreams, some of the visions that we've been percolating on, where there is a sure confirmation, a sure validation that we are in alignment to make a major change within thyself, starting with the way that we think, starting with the vision that we now want to manifest, that we now want to create. This is going to create a little bit of restlessness, a little bit of agitation, because now we're rearing to go. So again, just a reminder, if you're using excitement and inspiration as your fuel, great, that is awesome. If you're using frustration and anger as your fuel, yeah, that's very powerful energy too. So we're just harnessing the intensity. We're trying to give it a focus. We're trying to give it a vision. Because one thing, especially with the Gemini energy that Mars is in, is we're a little bit scatterbrained. We're all over the place. We aren't making as much progress as we want to be making because our energy is very divided. Once we can hone that in, lean into one option, one path, one decision over the other, there's really no stopping us, but there is going to be a trigger and activation to catapult us into fine tuning what that goal, that target, that vision, that goal, the dream actually is. The moon then going to make a positive interaction with Venus. Venus is the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in Virgo energy, really picking things apart, really breaking things down to the nitty gritty. She is dissecting, she is analyzing, she is reevaluating what needs to stay, what needs to go in her physical realm. All because she has new wants, new needs, new desires for safety, for security, for stability, for happiness, for joy, not only in her physical realm, not only in her relationship matters, but in her finances as well, especially where the long term is concerned. Now, the moon and Venus working very well together with the Scorpio and Virgo energy, because Scorpio energy puts the detective hat on and flips tables. The Virgo energy takes the magnifying glass and zooms in on what it is that's been hidden away from us, especially where heart activations are concerned, especially where, you know, we are kind of examining the shadow parts of self, where it is that we're kind of blocking our own progress, blocking our own, let's call it visual on what actually needs to be done. The moon and Venus working very well together, we're empowered, we're inspired. There's an intensity here. We're fixated on a path, a plan, a strategy to even make the smallest adjustments in our day-to-day -day life to create a realm that not only looks good, but actually feels good as well. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with that north node in Aries energy. So this puts us not in a negative funk, not in a positive funk, just in a particular position and perspective to just take a good look around to weigh our options, to see where it is that we could take action, make a step in a path, in a new direction, where it is that we do see the opportunity to kind of heal, grow, expand upon some of the ideas that we're starting to have that are really triggering an emotional activation to inspire us to move on and to move forward. Either way, we're starting to see things differently. We're looking back because, again, Mercury is retrograde. We're looking back through a different lens. That different lens, that different perspective, having us see ourselves in this present moment in a totally different light. And that perspective is putting us in a totally different position and circumstance to see what is possible for us now that we've brought certain chapters to an end, that we've brought a certain closure to some of the situations, the circumstances that have popped off as of recently. 
The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in Scorpio energy, making a very tough interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries energy. So let me just say that, of course, it's not going to feel good. Chiron being retrograde in this Aries energy has us taken a good look at ourselves. We are more in the mood and in the attitude to identify the problem in order to fix it, especially with how it is that we see ourselves. Again, Chiron in this Aries energy has a lot to do with this new version of self, the new image that we are standing in, that we're learning to be comfortable in, that we're projecting out to the world around us. But of course, the moon in Scorpio needs to flip tables, needs to kind of flip rocks over to see what we've been hiding away, what we've been repressing, where it is that there are fears and doubts and insecurities bouncing around in our unconscious selves that are essentially putting us in a situation to not make the best choices and decisions for self. Again, operating from that egoic conditioning and programming. The one thing that we can definitely count on is the minute that we identify an issue, a part of shadow self, either in our mental plane, in our emotions, or in our patterns and behaviors, we are able to change it, to transform it into something powerful. Again, reminder, the Scorpio energy takes pain and turns it into power.